Hey, welcome back to our series on using G Suite developer tools for student developers. In this segment, we'll look at using G Suite REST APIs along with code samples. I'm your host, Wesley Chun. If you missed the overview video, check it out first, because there we show you how to get started, getting credentials, and creating projects using G Suite APIs. Now we're going to dive in, starting with Google Drive. Here's code that lists the first 100 files and folders in your Google Drive. Believe it or not, the real application is really just the last three lines. Everything else is just the security boilerplate we covered earlier, plus the requested scopes and API endpoint creation. Once you have an endpoint to the Drive API, it's as simple as creating a file listing query, executing that query, and displaying the results. If you want to build this app line by line, check out the code lab. Heads up, Google's upgrading to newer client libraries to bring the GCP and G Suite worlds closer together. While the current libraries will stay operational for a while, you need to see how the code changes. So here's the exact same example, but with the newer libraries. As you can see, aside from a couple of import changes, managing the OAuth tokens yourself, everything else stays mostly the same. The G Suite docs already reflect this change, but bear in mind that most of the code in the wild still uses the original libraries, including the deep dive video linked here. While this sample is in Python, you can guess that the client library upgrades like this apply regardless of what language you use. OK, now that you've seen some code, let's take a step back and think why you would use the Drive API. Well, one reason could be you want to write an app that backs up zip files but expands them in flight to Google Drive. Well, this is an actual JavaScript sample app. Check out its open source repo if interested. Another example, let's say you get a job at a startup helping people automate photo albums. Well, you'd pitch that everyone who gets back from vacation have to empty out their cameras and phones to an external hard drive. And what do all those pictures look like on disk? A big and organized mess, right? But if you use the Drive API to access file metadata, like the timestamp and geolocation, you and your team could actually build an app that auto-generates photo albums. Now, taking a step further, stitch those photos together into a video. Upload it with the YouTube API. Then use the Gmail API to tell your friends and family. Get an idea of what you can do with Google APIs now? It's as limitless as your imagination. Each Google API has official documentation, and the G Suite ones live at developers.google.com slash whatever the API name is, such as Drive. The docs are structured via a Guides tab that feature quick starts in multiple languages, as well as guides for specific API features. Now, beyond the quick starts are more fully fleshed out sample apps. These live under the Samples tab for each API and links to any open source repos or developer videos. Now, if you need help, the Support tab links to Stack Overflow, our Issue Tracker for bugs and feature requests, or perhaps communities of like-minded developers. Next, let's move to the Sheets API. After all, aren't spreadsheets the most programmable of all the productivity apps? You may have data sitting in a database or a CSV file, but those form factors aren't exactly visually appealing, right? Do you really want to tell your boss to select star from your database? Well, spreadsheets are common and simple user interface that feature tabular data. And JavaScript developers can try the API code lab that lets you build a customized reporting tool for a fictitious toy manufacturer. Now, in this code sample, we're going to reuse that toy order database and migrate it to a spreadsheet. Again, the OAuth code will be the same as before, but switch to the sheet's read-write scope and its API endpoint. Now, as you can see, the first half of the code snippet queries for the toy order data, while the second half creates a new sheet and pushes the data there. Check out the video for more on this sample. Don't forget to enable the API first. Moving on, why the Slides API? Well, the same reason as Sheets, but taking it a step further. Yes, Sheets is definitely more visual than a database, but isn't a slide deck the ultimate in visualization? Or maybe you're organizing your school's hackathon and want to create only one master slide deck when seeking corporate sponsorships. Or you're a salesperson who's giving the same pitch to multiple clients. Well, why not create one master template deck, then auto-generate customized decks for each sponsor or customer? Now, here's that code snippet replacing the placeholder variables with actual data, whether it's the customer name or corporate logo. Now, this one's also got a video for further study. In real life, you can probably guess this isn't the whole thing, and you will need to use more than one API. Well, think about it. 
Don't you have to call the Drive API to copy the master template, then get the customer or sponsor information from the Sheets API, then generate the slide deck with the Slides API? Well, this pseudocode answers the obvious question of how to set up using more than one API at a time. Now, here's another example using two APIs. Here, we take data and a chart from a spreadsheet and add them to a slide deck. The video also shows how to read the data from the Sheets API first. Now, the Docs API is a perfect tool for creating a mail merge tool. Similar to the customer slide decks, let's say you got a form letter with variable placeholders like this. Then you have a sheet with the data for each recipient. Well, here's the heart of the mail merge code. Look how similar it is to the slides example. Once you copy the master template doc and read the data from the sheet, it's not much effort to fill in those variable placeholders. Now, this video doesn't go over the code, but you can get a link to the app's open source repo. Once it's done executing, you should have an individual Google Doc with all the substitutions made. All you need to do is call the Drive API to export it as PDF, then build an email message with this attachment, and then send it with the Gmail API. All right, so that's our quick tour of G Suite REST APIs. To learn more about others, check out our landing page. In the next episode, we'll cover a higher level platform that lets you access G Suite APIs with just objects and not have to worry as much about authorization code. Join us as we tell you about Google Apps Script. This is Wesley Chun from Google, and we'll see you next time.